Transportation officials in the Hochul administration are in the process of implementing a five-year capital project plan worth about $33 billion. Whether the state will be able to accomplish everything in this long-range vision is up for debate, as these projects are dealing with the same cost fluctuations experienced across the economy in New York and around the rest of the country. To discuss what this means going forward, we're joined on the Capitol Press Room by Ron Epstein, president and CEO of the New York Construction Materials Association and a former executive deputy commissioner for the state DOT. Welcome to the show, Ron. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And we're also joined by Mike Elmendorf, president and CEO of the Associated General Contractors of New York State. Welcome back, Mike. Thank you, David. Good to be with you. So, Ron, can you tell us a little bit about how a long-term capital plan for the state DOT is crafted, both in terms of identifying the resources that can be committed and what actually makes it into the list? Right about now, which is the midpoint of the current DOT plan, in theory, the agency should be working on the next plan. And the process for identifying projects is based on engineering and asset management. So what you try and do, and this is for the core roads and bridges, not the high-profile, high-priority projects, but for the uh, average uh, road and bridge, what you're trying to do is identify the needs and when you need to apply the right treatment to that asset at the right time so that you are being very frugal with your dollars. The longer you go on before you actually address the need, the more expensive it gets. And it's kind of like the Richter scale. So if you if you miss a cycle of maintenance or repair, you know, the next time you have to go back or when you get to it, it's going to be two, three, four times as much to do that same amount of work. So you, you want to catch it early in the cycle in terms of when uh, an asset should be treated. In terms of the resources, the state DOT program is funded in large part by federal aid. So one of the things we're also looking at is how, as, as an industry, how far in advance will the federal government be able to extend the current bill. The current bill ex- expires uh, in a couple of years as well. So the federal bill and the state bill are kind of aligned in terms of you know their duration. So the state is going to have to make some assumptions about whether the extraordinary level of aid that came from Washington this time around, which we had not seen in decades, can continue. And the same assumptions need to be made about the state level of resources, given the fact that the state is, is forecasting recurring deficits and also that the state, unless something changes with personal income tax receipts, is approaching the debt ceiling, whether or not they can continue to have the level of state participation in the DOT capital program that it currently has today. Well, historically, Ron, what sort of share of the capital plan is shouldered by the state? Well, the current split right now is about 60 percent New York State and 40 percent federal Historically, that has been about 50-50, but depending on what period you look at, that could change. Well, Mike, as Ron mentioned, we're in the middle of New York's current five-year capital plan. In terms of the plan itself, though, what are some of the bigger and smaller priorities in this $33 billion budget? Well, big priorities, you know, certainly we hear a lot about those. Uh, the biggest one uh, outside of New York City, at least, is is I-81, which is a multi-phase, multi-billion dollar uh, project in Syracuse. Uh, you've got the Kensington in uh, Buffalo. Uh, here in the capital region, you've got an interesting one, interesting because DOT doesn't own it, but you've got the replacement of the uh, Livingston Avenue Bridge, which is the rail bridge uh, across the Hudson River, uh, just north of uh, Albany proper. But those are the signature projects, right? The mega projects. Those aren't really where most New Yorkers spend their time traveling, right? I mean, the rest of the system, the boring stuff, the core is really what the nuts and bolts of the DOT system and our local systems are. And frankly, they've been suffering. Conditions are getting worse uh, with a lot of those assets. And to Ron's point, it's not only a problem because it costs motorists money, right? When you hit that pothole, it's a pretty big hit, but it ends up costing government a lot more to bring those assets back to a state of good repair once they've started declining, and declining they are. Well, as I mentioned in the top, Mike, the transportation portion of our budget has been impacted by the same sort of inflationary pressures as elsewhere in the economy. So what does that mean for our ability to actually execute the capital projects plan in terms of a $33 billion expectation? 
it means that your spending power has been dramatically eroded by both inflation and material cost escalation, right? They kind of go hand in hand. Um, and, you know, we talked about this. I don't mean to be on the I told you so tour, but you and I talked about this, you know, when this capital program was first being put together on the heels of the federal infrastructure bill that we were facing record inflation and cost escalation. And we were going to run out of money before we ran out of projects in this capital program. We have seen dramatic cost escalation on the mega projects to the magnitude of $100 million plus a piece. I mean, that is real money. Uh, and at the end of the day, where does it come out of? It comes out of the ability of the DOT to deliver all the projects that they intended to deliver over the course of the capital program. And what does that mean? It means conditions get worse. DOT now is required annually to report to the legislature on their conditions as a result of legislation that we fought hard for. They just delivered that report to the legislature in July, uh, and the news is awful. 11 out of 11 regions, every single region of the state saw their bridge conditions decline. Seven out of 11 saw their pavement conditions decline. That's terrible news any day, but it's really terrible news on the heels of the biggest ever capital program and the historic federal infrastructure bill. And a lot of that is owing to how inflation has really just eroded the spending power of the capital plan. One of the things I want to put in perspective is that, David, as you as you mentioned, the capital program that was enacted uh, is $33 billion over a five-year period. Having said that, however, only $17.4 billion of that goes to actual capital construction. The balance of the capital program goes to other things that DOT has to do. But in terms of construction, so when you're dealing with inflationary impacts of, you know, between 60 to 100 percent on uh, large projects and 30 percent on smaller projects, uh, that erodes extraordinarily quickly. Well, Ron, Mike mentioned the idea that with the inflationary pressure on the capital plan, not everything in that plan is going to be able to get funded if we're talking about sticking with that $33 billion budget. But we talked with the state DOT about the impact of inflationary pressure, and they said that the DOT remains fully committed to meeting the obligations called for under the, the current plan. So, as someone with experience in the DOT recently, do you think there's a way that they can meet all these obligations, or are they inevitably going to have to pick and choose what gets funded as we get down the stretch here? Listen, I, I, all I can tell you is based on my own experience, and we've looked at this right now, forecasted through the end of the plan, based on the experience we've seen to date with inflationary impacts, which, by the way, are caused by, you know, as Mike said, geopolitical events. They're looking at a $4.4 billion decrease in terms of what the plan can deliver. That is more than one full fiscal year of construction. So unless they have identified additional resources above and beyond that they can somehow access, I think it's going to be extraordinarily difficult to honor the commitment that was in the MOU. Well, Ron, given that uh, gap you just highlighted, when do we begin to see the potential shortcomings in reality? Is this something that could be begin to have a real effect in 2025? I think you would definitely see it uh, towards the end of 2025 and into 2026. They're going to have to make some decisions. And let's be honest, there's also $4.4 billion out of the $17 billion that are what we call signature or priority projects. Those are the projects that Mike just mentioned. Those have to get delivered. And so if you have no additional budget authority that's been provided by the legislature and adopted by the governor, then you can only dip into the existing balance to pay for that. And what I mean by the existing balance, that is the core bridge, the core road projects that the average New York resident depends on to go about their livelihood. Well, Mike, is that the right path moving forward or should the state dig into its pockets and find money to make up uh, the difference so that the original plan can actually be executed? Yeah, they should. And as you know, we've been fighting hard since really the inception of this capital program to do that. Uh, the Senate majority has been uh, extraordinarily aggressive on that front. They proposed initially increasing the capital plan by $10 billion uh, over its five-year uh, period which would have not only addressed the inflation and cost escalation that we knew at the time was coming, despite that some people tried to pretend it wasn't, but it would have been uh, more of a state of good repair number to actually improve the condition of the DOT system. 
Uh, they tried a four-year version of that the second year of the capital program, um, didn't get anywhere. Um, and then this past year, we succeeded in getting the assembly out onto the field, if you will, with asking for an increase of $400 million just for core DOT capital construction this year, because at the same time, as Ron talked about at the top of the segment, the state's fiscal condition has continued to decline while we've been having these conversations, right? So a $10 billion ad at the start would have been possible because that's not cash. Remember, these things get bonded. That's not realistic right now in terms of both the state's cash position and, and the debt limit, uh, the debt cap that remains. Um, so we've been trying to be realistic about it, but the governor and the legislature have a choice. They increase the level of investment in the DOT capital program to bail it out from inflation and cost escalation, or they start deciding what they're going to choose not to do, uh, and they brace themselves for worse conditions, which ultimately will cost them more to fix and will cost New Yorkers more. You talk about a regressive tax when you're driving your kids to school and you hit a pothole and you've got a $1,200 repair. That's a big hit. Think of the cost of businesses in New York State, whether you're Chobani in New Berlin or whether you're Loria Pasta in Avon, New York. Um, you know, you have a situation where, you know, if a bridge is um, is basically deficient. Now, granted, the state will close it immediately if it is unsafe. That's one thing New York is very good about is in terms of, you know, making sure the bridges are safe. That does not mean a bridge may not need to be posted. And so it means a truck may have a detour, uh, have to take a different route. It means a school bus may have to be detoured and, and take a different route. So there are real life implications for the businesses in New York State, the Alstoms of the world in, in parts of the state where they are a primary employer. Uh, and the more difficult it is for them to do business in New York and, and to actually move their product to their customer, the more they're going to rethink uh, the you know, desire to do business in New York State. So, you know, we're not talking about investing in, in concrete, asphalt, and steel. We're talking about investment in the economic competitiveness of New York State. Well, we've been speaking with Ron Epstein. He is the president and CEO of the New York Construction Materials Association. Ron, thanks so much for making the time. Thank you. And we've also been hearing from Mike Elmendorf, president and CEO of the Associated General Contractors of New York State. Thank you as always, Mike. Thank you, David. Capital Press Room a production of WCNY Connected, Syracuse.